we want to find the particular solution to the Bernoulli differential equation given the initial condition y of zero equals one. A Bernoulli differential equation is a differential equation that fits this form here, the form dy dt plus p of ty equals f of t times y raised to the power of n. So notice how the given differential equation is not in the correct form, we need the term p of t times y on the left with dy dt. So we'll subtract two y on both sides of the equation, which will give us dy dt minus two y equals y to the fifth. Notice how n in our equation is equal to five. To solve our Bernoulli differential equation, we use the equation v equals y raised to the power of one minus n to perform substitutions for y and dy dt. So notice in this case we would have v equals y raised to the power of one minus five, which means we have v equals y raised to the power of negative four, or v equals one over y to the fourth. Now we need to solve this equation for y, again because we're performing substitutions for y and dy dt. So v equals one over y to the fourth. If we take the reciprocal of both sides of the equation, we would have y to the fourth equals one over v. So if we take the fourth root of both sides, or raise both sides to the one-fourth power, we'd have y equals one over v to the one-fourth, or if we want v raised to the power of negative one-fourth. Now the next step we want to find dy dt, but to find dy dt, because here we have y as a function of v, we have to apply the chain rule, where dy dt is equal to dy dv times dv dt. So dy dt is equal to, dy dv would be equal to negative one-fourth times, times v raised to the power of negative one-fourth minus one or negative five-fourths times dv dt. Now we'll perform a substitution for y using this equation and a substitution for dy dt using this equation. So this would give us negative one-fourth v to the negative five-fourths times dv dt minus two times y, which is v to the negative one-fourth, equals y to the fifth. Y to the fifth would be v raised to the power of negative one-fourth raised to the fifth power, which would be v raised to the power of negative five-fourths. Now this equation is a linear first order differential equation. So for the next step, let's multiply both sides of the equation. So this first term here is just dv dt. So we'll multiply both sides of the equation by negative four v to the power of positive five-fourths. So negative four times negative one-fourth is one. V to the five-fourths times v to the negative five-fourths is v to the zero, which is also one. So we just have dv dt, and then we'll have negative four times negative two, that's positive eight, so we have plus eight. V to the five-fourths times V to the negative one-fourth is just V equals, on the right we'll have negative four, and then V to the five-fourths times V to the negative five-fourths, once again is equal to one. So now we'll solve this differential equation for V. Once we find that solution, we can find the solution to the given differential equation, which will be Y. We can solve this differential equation using integrating factor or separation of variables. Let's solve this differential equation using separation of variables. So for our next step, let's subtract eight V on both sides, which would give us dV dt equals negative eight V minus four. Let's go ahead and factor the right side by factoring out negative four. So we'd have dV dt equals negative four times the quantity two V plus one. Now let's multiply both sides by dt. And now let's divide both sides by the quantity two V plus one. So we'd have one over the quantity two V plus one DV equals negative four DT. And now integrate both sides of the equation. So on the left side we have to perform U substitution where u is equal to two v plus one. So differential u is equal to two dv 
dividing both sides by two, notice how dv equals one-half du, which means the integral of one over the quantity two v plus one of the respect of v would be one-half times natural log absolute value of two v plus one. We would have a constant of integration, but we'll include that constant on the right with this integral here. So this is equal to the integral of negative four with respect to t would be negative four t plus c. Let's let this constant be equal to c sub one. Now for the next step, let's multiply both sides by two. So on the left side, we'd have natural log. Let's go ahead and assume the quantity two v plus one is positive. So we have natural log of two v plus one equals, multiplying the right side by two, we'd have negative eight t plus, let's let two times c sub one be equal to c sub two. And now let's go ahead and solve for v. We can write this as an exponential equation or exponentiate both sides of the equation, meaning e raised to this power must be equal to e raised to this power. And the left side here simplifies very nicely to two v plus one. On the right side we'd have e raised to the power of negative eight t, and if we want we could write this as times e to the power of c sub two. This is just another constant. Let's have this be equal to c sub three. So we can say two v plus one equals c sub three times e raised to the power of negative eight t. And now to solve for v, we would subtract one and then divide by two. So we'd have v equals c sub three e raised to the power of negative eight t minus one, all divided by two. But remember v is equal to one over y to the fourth. So we have one over y to the fourth equals c sub three e to the negative eight t minus one, all divided by two. And now we'll take the reciprocal of both sides of the equation. So we'd have y to the fourth equals two over the quantity c sub three e to the negative eight t minus one. And then we can take the fourth root of both sides of the equation, erase both sides to the one fourth power. So the general solution is y or y of t equals two divided by the quantity c sub three e to the negative eight t minus one all raised to the one fourth power. So this would be the general solution, but remember we're looking for the particular solution because we were given that y of zero equals one. Using the initial condition, we can find c sub three, we substitute zero for t and one for y of t. So we'd have one equals two divided by the quantity c sub three e to the power of negative eight times zero minus one, all raised to the one fourth power. So we'd have one equals two divided by, well e to the zero is just one, so we have c sub three minus one, all raised to the one fourth. To solve for c and undo this one fourth power, we'd raise both sides of the equation to the fourth power. Which would just give us one equals two divided by the quantity c sub three minus one. Multiplying both sides by c sub three minus one, we'd have c sub three minus one equals two, c sub three equals three which means the particular solution is y of t equals two divided by the quantity three times e raised to the power of negative eight t minus one, all raised to the one fourth power. Now before we go, let's look at our solution graphically. So the given differential equation gives us the red slope field. This point represents the initial condition y of zero equals one, and our particular solution is y of t graphed here in blue. Notice how it fits nicely in the slope field and it passes through the point zero comma one, verifying our solution is correct.